after last week, we should have a topic or at least an idea of what we want to research. This week, we're going to talk about how to search for information in a way that will help you sort the good stuff from the less than useful stuff. We librarians like to call this process creating search strategies because it's more than just randomly typing words into Google. You are actually going to be strategic about your search. Three simple goals this week, but I'm going to be hard pressed to fit them all in. But we're going to do it. I'm going to show you how I, as a librarian, search. To start, we're going to talk about what you should be searching, where you can search, and last, but definitely not least, how to search. This is the first stumper that students face. What sort of materials should you search? Books, encyclopedias, statistical abstracts, journal articles, websites. There's so much out there. How do you know what to use? First, it really depends on your topic or your area of study. If your topic is historical in nature, journal articles probably won't be your best bet. Hit the books instead. If you're studying cutting-edge issues in medicine or healthcare, you're probably not going to focus on older textbooks. You may be looking solely at recent journal articles. Sometimes a professor will help you make this decision by requiring a certain number of books, journal articles, and web-based sources. You've probably heard of primary and secondary sources. Primary sources are the original materials like speeches, diary entries, or journal articles that report on original research. For historical example, the primary source is Martin Luther King's actual I Have a Dream speech. In a healthcare example, the primary source is the original research study. Usually, this is published in a journal. Secondary sources are distillations or summaries of the primary source. These are things that are written or created after the fact. They still have great value, sometimes even more than primary sources, because they can give context and help you understand the primary source. Going back to our history example, a secondary source might be a book written about the famous speech. And a secondary source in a health research is something that reports on or summarizes original research. Guidelines are frequently examples of this. Generally, you're going to be using a variety of source types, and that's okay, as each has its own strengths and weaknesses. There's just so much out there. Millions of books, tens and thousands of journals, hundreds of databases. Where in the world should you start your search? Well, of course you can start Google. Why not? But should Google be your only source? Goodness, no. Wandering beyond Google can make a lot of students nervous. I mean, how do you choose where to search? Here's a secret. Us librarians are really trying to make it as easy as possible for you. Use the library's website. Go through the subject guides and see what databases we suggest. Remember when we talked about how much the library is spending for these databases? This is supported in part by your tuition dollars, so you might as well get your money's worth and use these resources. And guess what? Your professors are pretty smart too. Most of them have to do research, so they're already searching in databases and other sources. Ask them where they search, and you'll get some great suggestions. Okay, teaching you how to search is going to take way more than one slide and pretty much the rest of the semester. There are a couple of presentations this week that will start to cover how to search. This is a skill that takes time to develop. I'll be giving you feedback until the last assignment on ways to improve your searching techniques. And also, don't hesitate to help your classmates if they seem search on a stuck. And also, don't hesitate to help your classmates if they seem stuck on a search. The best searching comes from a lot of different minds and a lot of different ideas.